Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am here with six quick and easy but high-end looking spring home decor. Let's get started. Our first DIY today is super easy but super cute. I'm using two of these wood pallets from Dollar Tree as well as two of these bunny wood ornaments and some jute twine. The first thing I'm going to do just so my um, bunnies don't have a hole in their ears, I'm using some wood filler and from the back of the bunny I am filling in that little hole. It doesn't make it completely invisible, but it does a really good job of camouflaging. And then I just kind of rub it in, let it dry, and then we'll sand that. I'm going to use my favorite Waverly Antique Wax on my little wood palettes here. And you saw there I was just sanding a little bit of some rough edges. Take your time on these, getting in all the little cracks and grooves. And I just took my time brushing on the antique wax and then wiping away the excess. I just really feel like using this dark staining effect really elevates the look and value of your projects. So then go ahead and wipe away the excess. You can see there in the middle, I still need to get the cross pieces there. So front, back, all the edges and sides I did on both of our little wood palettes. Now for my bunnies, I'm keeping this project fairly neutral, but of course, you know I love colors. So you could go either way with this. I am painting one side of each bunny with my white Waverly chalk paint, and I am painting them opposite sides so that if you put them together, they could face each other. In order to make our palettes be able to stand, I'm going to take eight of these tumbling tower blocks that I also stained with the antique wax, and I'm going to glue them together with my wood glue in pairs like this. And we're gonna use two pairs for a stand um, for each of our palettes. You can see I'm just using a Clorox wipe there, wiping away the excess wood glue. And I really find that staining your blocks before you glue them, um, makes them look nicer. Now for each of our bunnies, I'm just gonna make a simple jute twine bow, wrapping it around three fingers about four times, and then we'll tie it in the center with another short piece of jute twine, trim away any excess pieces that are sticking out, and we're going to make two of these, one for each bunny, and we'll just glue these kind of where the bunny's neck would be. These are a really simple way to add a little texture and farmhouse look to your projects. Once their bows are on, we will put some hot glue on the back of each bunny and attach that down to the center of our wood palette and do that for both. Once those are dry, we will then glue our pairs of tumbling tower blocks, one pair on the front, one pair on the back at the base of our palette so that it is able to stand on its own. So you can see here I'm kind of seeing how wide it is. It's almost exactly the same width as that short end of the palette. I'm gonna put a bead of hot glue on each side there of the blocks, lay them down, and then basically squish the palette standing up between the two pairs of tumbling tower blocks. And here's our finished product, super cute and easy. Dollar Tree puts out these wood ornaments for, for practically any season, so you could make this same project for other seasons as well. If you are stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I hope you like what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. Also make sure you hit the bell to set your notifications. 
If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, welcome back. Thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. For my second DIY today, I'm going to use a few supplies that are easily found at Hobby Lobby. Right now, the wood is 40 to 50% off, so I got this hanging sign with the beads, and I got these sets of letters, which I'll show you in a moment. This is a two-sided sign, so even though I am decorating it for spring today, I will most likely come back and take this same idea and have the word summer on the other side so I can just flip it around. I'm going to paint the inside of my sign with my white Waverly chalk paint. So you can see I put the painter's tape around so that my frame stays the unfinished wood. I did think about doing the antique wax, but then I felt like I would have had to do all the beads and I just didn't feel like doing that today. So these packets of letters are a tall skinny font. They are $1.29 per pack and you get two letters. So I feel like that's a pretty good deal. So I bought the six packs I needed to spell the word spring and now I have another set of letters I can use. These are the colors of Waverly chalk paint I'm going to use on my letters. Here on the S, I am using ballet slipper. On the P, I'm using pumpkin, maize for R, fern for I, agave for N, and lavender for the G. Once I had them spaced out how I wanted them, I am just hot gluing them down, getting them evenly spaced. And this project is really simple. Um, maybe you don't have a Dollar Tree that has a lot of supplies, but Hobby Lobby um, usually has all these things in stock and you can also order online and have it delivered. In the Easter ribbon, however, at Dollar Tree, I saw this like teal kind of blue rickrack. I thought this was super cute and a great way to add a little bit more decoration to the spring side here of my sign. So I'm just measuring and cutting the lengths I need to go around all four sides and then we will hot glue those down. And again, here's our quick and easy spring sign. This sign at Hobby Lobby is normally $8.99, so when it was 40% off, it was right around $5. I think that's a great deal since it is two-sided. If you are enjoying this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up as this lets YouTube know that people are enjoying my content and they will spread it out to more and more people. For DIY number three, I'm going to use one of my favorite new stencils from Magnolia Design Company for God So Loved, John 316, and this repurposed wood palette sign, which I believe originally was from Hobby Lobby. I found it at a thrift store, sanded it down, and someone gave me the tip that if I use a little water with my antique wax, it will um, make it go further and I won't have to use as much. So I thought I would try to spray my board. I am just using that antique wax, brushing it on, wiping it off. And I will also go all around the outside edges to make everything look uniform. Next, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use our Magnolia stencils. Here, I'm first going to fuzz it on our tacky cloth. I have not used this stencil yet. So I'm gonna do this two or three times just to put a little bit of lint on the back of the stencil so it's not quite so sticky. And then I will center it on my wood sign. This was the perfect width you can you know, fold it down to see where it lies. You'll 
want to um, rub and press it down all the way to make sure you have the adhesive all the way stuck down so no paste will get under the stencil. I decided to use my black chalk paste for the cross. Um, the detail on this is amazing. It actually looks like it's made out of nails. And then I'm going to use white on all of the words. You'll see down here in just a sec that I accidentally got a little bit of black mixed in with my white as I was doing the reference, John 316. So then I kind of tried to randomly spread a little bit of black in there. Didn't bother me too much, um, but if it did bother you, you could one, go slower, use a smaller squeegee, or just wet it, wipe it off, and start again. So in here I'm just taking uh, the big chunks of excess chalk paste off and then lifting our stencil to reveal. Now when you have a slatted sign like this, sometimes it'll get into the cracks, but I just took a um, X-Acto and went across the cracks and I love how simple and beautiful this turned out. If you have questions about any of the tools or supplies that I've used in today's video, please check the description box, which is located below the video title for all sorts of links that will answer your questions. For DIY number four, we're going to make an Easter Blessings egg-shaped sign. This is one that was from Target Dollar Spot last year, but I know Dollar Tree also has egg-shaped signs. And then I'm using these metal words that were from Easter last year. I believe they have something similar this year. I'm gonna show you here a real simple technique for making a stripes on um, any sort of shape. So taking this thick, I believe this is one and a half inch painter's tape, I just started by making one stripe, um, that was the angle that I wanted, and then I'm going to do additional pieces of tape right next to. Then you're gonna see I'm going to peel one up and then um, so that every other space is going to be exposed. And then we're going to paint those stripes then come back and paint the other stripes. So I think you can see what I'm doing here. And I have my paints pretty close to the same colors I used for my spring sign. I'm going to use maize, ballet slipper, agave, um, fern, I or no, celery, and the lavender. So I have two different greens. So here's the maize. Then I'm gonna wait and hold off on the pink. Next, I'm going to do agave. And I'm using chippy brushes because I didn't want this paint to be like super solid. I wanted it to look um, kind of rustic and I don't know, a little bit worn. Here is celery. This is a light sage green by Waverly. And then we're starting over our pattern that piece of tape will be the yellow and now ballet slipper and then our bottom space there will be lavender which I only have a small bottle of I don't think this one comes in the big bottles but I really like this color once um, we peeled off the tape and then let those spots dry then I'm going to come back with my tape and I'm going to put the tape over the painted stripes that we already um, have there. So it will cover up our paint and then we will be able to paint our um, other stripes that right now are still the unfinished wood.
And now the most fun part, peeling off the tape, and you can see now all of the stripes. If your paint is a little more solid than you'd like, you can always sand some of it away. Now these Easter blessings words are fine as the galvanized metal. Um, I decided to go ahead and paint them with my white chalk paint, just one coat. It's okay if a little of the silver is shining through just to kind of soften them up a little bit. So going over them and then we will let those dry completely. I decided I also wanted to add one of these chunky wood crosses from Dollar Tree. You can see I filled in the ornament uh, hole there with wood filler. And then I'm just painting the entire front and all of the sides with my white Waverly chalk paint. Once all of our pieces are dry, we can glue everything on. I am just using hot glue in a few places on the back of this sign. That way I can pop off the words if I want to, to make it say something else. So Easter, then the cross, then blessings. I did not add a hanger to this sign. Of course you could do that. Maybe just gluing some jute twine to the back adding some beads if you'd like to be able to hang this. But I just made it so it could um, stand on a shelf or a mantle. If you are on Facebook, I would love to encourage you to head over to my Monarch Mom DIY Facebook page and please like and follow it. Thanks so much. DIY number five is going to be another cross themed project as we head into Easter. I'm using this other stencil from Magnolia as well as the MDF cross that goes with it. Now this was one of those rounds that I purchased at Target for $3. It's got this wood grain looking paper on the one side and it is a chalkboard on the other side. So even though today I'm only working with this wood side, I do plan on making something else for the other side at another time. So using my antique wax, brushing it on, we're going to wipe it off just to give a darker um, finish to this side of our wood round. I believe when I measured this before, it's about 12, maybe 13 inches across. Um, I just thought it was a great surface for $3 at Target and probably still available right now in the spring. Went ahead and also went around with the antique wax on the edge just so that it looked nice and finished. To add some color to my cross here, I'm going to use again my agave. It's like my favorite color for spring this year. And I'm going to just give it one good coat. I'm trying really hard not to get the paint onto the sides and just keep it on the top. Um, I have had questions about these brushes. They are the best. They are by Plaid and I buy them at Walmart. I get two of these really wide ones for about four to five dollars. The price kind of keeps changing, but um, they are in, right above where the acrylic and um, Waverly chalk paint are in my Walmart's craft aisle. So give that a good coat of the agave, and then I am going to fuzz my stencil because again, this is the first time I have used it. And this is the verse, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things 
through Christ who strengthens me. This is a great verse for all time and a great reminder to have in your home. So fuzz that up a few times so that it's not quite so sticky and then center that. You can easily line it up because the cross is just the exact height of the stencil. Get it centered. You're gonna push it down to make sure there's no air bubbles and then we'll be able to use our white chalk paste to stencil the words onto our cross. And now we're ready for the drum roll, please, as we peel our stencil and reveal our beautiful verse on our cross. Now, I had done a coat of Mod Podge over top of my agave, and wow, this stencil was really sticking, so you want to be really careful to try not to stretch your stencil. Now, this is the jute hanger that came on this sign, so I am just returning it back into the holes the one side has a knot. And just to elevate this sign a little bit more, I decided to add some more of these beads. Again, these are from a Walmart garland that was at Christmas time. I just took it apart and I've been using these white and gray beads for quite a few projects. So um, put a little tape on the end of your twine so you can easily string your beads. And I thought the white beads would be great to coordinate with the wording on our cross. So once you have those on there, just knot it on the back, trim it off, and I think this really does, like I said, adds quite a bit of value to our sign. My last step then is just going to be to center my cross. You can see I am marking the center between the two holes where the twine is, putting a mark there at the top. And then I'm doing the same thing, marking the center of the top of my cross. That way when I glue this down, I can make sure the top of my cross is nice and centered. I just attached this with some hot glue and here's our finished project. What do you guys think? I would be honored if you would consider sharing this video to your friends and acquaintances. It really does help me to grow my channel and be able to bring you new videos each and every week. DIY number six, a wood slap box with vases, is going to be the most complicated one for this video, but still fairly easy to do with some square wood planks, some of these decorative tiles, some paint sticks, and a few vases. So I'm using all six of the wood squares that came in this one package from Dollar Tree, and I am going to paint them again with my Waverly chalk paint in agave. You can see I'm kind of holding two together. That's going to be one of the long sides of my box. These next two are going to be the other long side, and then each of my short sides of my box will just be one square wood slat. So painting those on the fronts and letting them dry. And while those are drying, I'm going to use one and a half sheets of these decorative tile stickers. I thought about using the entire square, but I didn't want to cover up so much of the paint. So I'm taking my scissors and I'm cutting out six of these. I don't know what you call these shapes. They're kind of like a floral medallion type of look. And we're going to put one of these on each of our six pieces. Now to hold my two long sides together, I'm taking four of these giant craft sticks from Walmart and I'm going to trim them all the same size so that we can use them on the back side or the inside of the box to um, glue our square slats together. So using my little trimmer guy here, I'm going to cut those edges and then we will glue these with hot glue 
across the backs of our squares. I will then go back and paint over these so that they don't stick out quite so much on the inside of our box. Now that all the pieces of our box are dry, I'm just taking the backing off of these um, tile pieces and centering them on each of our six squares of our box. Now to construct our box, I'm going to use hot glue and I'm also going to use these pieces of bamboo skewer that I trimmed to fit the height of the box. So running a bead of hot glue there on the edge, then I'm going to put a skewer down and then I'm going to attach the side of the box also with hot glue to that skewer. So the skewer is kind of like the elbow that's in the center inside of each corner if that makes sense so it just gives a little bit more substance for the glue to stick to here you can see a different angle i have the two pieces together ran a bead of hot glue and then set the skewer piece down this is looking at our box from the top and I'm also going to do the exact same thing with the other two corners. I'm going to use four paint sticks to cover the bottom of our box. You can see I cut those there and I am going to paint them on all sides also with the agave. I will say that I also painted the bamboo skewer pieces on the inside corners of the box as well just so everything blended in together. While our paint sticks are drying, I am going to use some matte finish Mod Podge on all four sides of the outside of my box, just so that these big stickers essentially don't peel off from the box. So just apply a nice generous layer. And then now we're going to go around kind of the top edge of the box as well with that matte finish Mod Podge, just to make everything look nice and finished. Now we're looking at the bottom of our box. I'm going to use some tacky glue, one because it has a little bit more grip and it dries clear. We're going to take our four paint stick pieces, wipe away any excess glue that seeps out. I'm going to put the, um, the edge ones all the way to the edge of the box and then we'll center the other two that go um, between those. I think that makes sense. So now we're doing the one at the top of your screen, getting that all the way to the edge of the box. And then once we have all four in place, weighing that down until they're dried completely. Now these are just three glass bottles from Dollar Tree. I did spray them with a matte clear to make them a little stickier for the paint. Let that dry and then I'm going to do two coats of my Waverly chalk paint in white. Once those were dry, I'm going to use my Cool Shot glue gun and a little bit of this burlap trim from Dollar Tree and just go around the top edge of our vases to finish them off and make them look kind of nice and farmhouse and give a finished touch. And then we'll put all three of these into our little wood crate that we made. You can add florals for whatever season or color you want and you can feel free to change these out with other vases whatever you'd like to put in this wood crate. This was really fun to put together. I hope you guys enjoyed it and let me know what you think.
Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments which of these projects was your favorite, and we'll see you soon.